Yeah. You said that to build wealth and to build this generational wealth that, you know, just focused on work and only focused on that senior layer activity is, is not the right answer because there's so much more to life that is missing if you're only focused on work. So let's fast track five years from now. What does it look like for Revere and the family of properties that you're, you're under, whether it be real estate development, media, what does that kind of look like for you? Um, 10 to 15 properties in a given year. Um, and you're smiling, but we hold people accountable I, on this show. So I, just so you know, there's absolutely. tons of people that come in here and they tell me they're going to do this yeah. in six months, six months. Yeah. We follow up with them and like, dude, yeah. did you do this? So like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, come on. What, are, what do we win if we surpass what I just said? What I said? You're going you're gonna to win generational wealth because you're going to have <laughs> multiple streams of income coming in because you actually did it. And maybe you'll be an active participant in, in uh, there you the success, go. success of that. Um Cha-ching. <laughs> I kind of, I like that. It's like a little like soundboard. soundboard. Yeah. All right. So today we are with Nick Lind of Revere Real Estate and Revere Media. And today we have tons of things that we want to talk about. But before we jump into those, tell us who you are, what it is that you do, and the number one emoji that you're currently using on your phone. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think I'll answer it in backwards order if go. I may. First and foremost, though, Jonathan, thank you for having of me course. on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, sort of an impromptu opportunity for us to spend a bit of time together and also sharing some, uh, some info with the, with the listeners. I would say the green heart is the emoji I use the best because <laughs> it's the revere that. color. Oh, okay. Got so it. So it's just a way, you know, it's not red, red. I, 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 I save only for my fiance, you know, but if it's a heart and it's a green heart, it's sort of, you know, there you go. Uh, platonic, if you will. Um, so that's the emoji I use <laughs> mostly. Platonic emojis. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm going to trademark that. Yeah. But no, so I'm Nick Lind. I'm a owner, operator, and, and principal of Revere Real Estate and also co-founder of Revere Media Group with Nick Costa, who's our media director. You know, what, what I do is I'm a real estate developer. So, you know, I, I build um, ground up new construction in Orange County. And now we just picked up a spot in coastal L.A., in Santa Monica in an area called Sunset Park. Uh, but essentially what we do, the long and the short of it is I raise funds, um, I seek and, and source deals. I have a finance background, so I was a financial planner for 10 years. So the math side of it is um, kind of comes a little bit more naturally, if you will. But I source out the deal. I see, you know, what we can get it for, um, what it would cost in construction, and then what I think disposition or what we could exit the property is. And if I see a good enough spread, you know, I, I, I suggest it to my investors. We go in on the deal, um, do the entitlements, the architecture, the engineering, and, and basically A to Z, uh, demo the existing structure, build new homes, sell off the homes, hopefully make a spread, and then continue to move forward and move outward. Where the media side kind of plays off of that is, you know, with my relationships, networking, first and foremost, Nick Costa is the one that had, had introduced me to you. Um, as well as Andy Dane Carter, shout out to Andy Dane Carter. Um, you know, the, the networking opportunities in real estate, I, I'm sure, you know, you've been involved in real estate for a long time, but the ability to network, meet brokers, uh, meet investors, you know, meet other people, you know, I, I met a, a gal on, uh, on LinkedIn and another guy on LinkedIn, both of whom who want to start development with me as partners in Los Angeles deals. So just sort of networking that way, not to mention if I have the opportunity and the luxury like we did with one of our Huntington Beach builds halfway through construction and we were able to pre-sell it um, with sort of a custom home kind of uh, approach to it, that was through networking. That was through, you know, getting out in the community. So um, his role is, you know, putting all of the advertisements together and the media outlets and the Instagram, you know, LinkedIn, all of those different platforms, hopefully to help propel and exponentially grow uh, the real estate side. So what would you say would be a piece of advice that you would give to somebody? Because there's tons of people out there that call themselves wholesalers, investors. They're doing all these things and they're advertising, you know, you should also be doing this. And, it, you know, overnight you're going to make a billion dollars. Right. Uh, what's a mistake that you've made yeah. um, so far that, you know, if you were to go back six months, a year um, ago later, maybe somebody that's listening to this, 
maybe they want to get into this field or yeah. maybe they're already in it. What's something that you've made as a mistake that you'd recommend not to do? Well, the number one thing I would say is that we always try to do our best to budget properly, but it's always takes longer and it's more expensive than we ever thought. So that's, that's bar none. I would just, whatever numbers you are, you have on your pro forma at or a zero or something, add it, yeah, <laughs> just, just multiply it by, you know, 110% or just assume that it's always going to be longer. Um, I made that mistake, especially because I know my internal drive and I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do and I'm very driven. And so I'm thinking to myself, Oh, great. You know, we'll be fine because I'm extremely involved. Even then I'm still delayed by subcontractors, you know, cause sometimes I'm on their timeline or, you know, so-and-so can't start until the other one finishes. And, and that's something that's almost out of my control. So to your question, I would just say, it's always going to be longer than it, than you assume if you're in construction or if you're in development. Um, it's always, especially with this, not to mention the city. I'm surprised I didn't start there. The city always takes longer than you anticipate with entitlements. We've done projects where we sublot, where we take a, a one address and add an additional address and parcel the land into two lots without getting into, into too much detail. Essentially, you're just creating an additional residence and um, it takes a while with the city. So I would say that the biggest sort of thing to be mindful of if you're in this industry or you're wanting to get into this industry is to just be mindful of of the contingencies. A, a lot of people come to me um, to, to help them grow through media, to help them grow through social, digital marketing. And one thing that you said is you're passionate and you're driven about work. I find that a lot of people fail in their business if they're passionate and driven about work and they're not also passionate and driven uh, about their life. What would be some of the things that you're passionate or driven about, you know, life, hobbies, yeah. things that you like to do? Well, um, uh, several things, but I, I think we're, if I were to come about it from a macro level and then sort of get myopic on that question, I would say balance is key. So regardless of what it is that I am passionate about or what I am driven and, and motivated about outside of my vocation, I would just say, if I can, if I can come about my life from, from, you know, a, a perspective of balance and family and work life balance, as we all hear all over the place. Um, but I think what it means to me more specifically is I have a passion for surfing. I absolutely love to surf. And I'm you're going to have to take me out cause I've never gone surfing. I, I tell people that I live in Huntington beach. It's like, Oh, you surf. Yeah. Never tried it. Really? Never. It's, it's so <laughs> challenging. Okay. You know, and Especially I'm not for a tall guy. Uh, yeah. That's I mean, a, you just get you on a big board. Okay. We'll get you on a big board, get you on like a nice, we're going to have to film this. We'll go down to San Onofre. Jonathan Hawkins um, surfing for he, the first time. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll okay. be a humbling experience. <laughs> let me tell you. And I'm not saying that I'm like great by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The reason why I think one of the reasons it's sort of a part of my character is I, I love to be challenged in, in ways. And so it's a very, very difficult sport. I've only been doing it for like hardcore for like five years. And I've just got to the point where I would consider myself like as an intermediate. And it's just something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I also was a collegiate soccer player. So I played soccer my whole life. I've always been basically anything sports related. I grew up, my, my father was born and raised in Germany. And so skiing was our family pastime. So we had the, you know, sort of the, um, the the suburban with the box and we do family road trips and we go skiing we go to mammoth we go to tahoe and we go you know places the like and so skiing turned into snowboarding which is something that i also have a, a passion for. you're gonna have so, to take me to do that too yeah have we you get hired that? a lot we have a lot of clients in big bear that hire us for all their properties yeah big bear's cool there's some uh, good investment opportunities in big bear especially with vrbo and airbnb and how that has changed all of the rentals, especially in areas that are easily accessible to Los Angeles and kind of make you feel like you're away, but you're not that far. I mean, Big Bear rentals, kill it kill it yeah absolutely so let's let's i don't know if that was like enough on the no that's fine lifestyle. No. i really enjoy spending time with my fiance no i just liked i like I talking a, about it yeah because some people yeah. they're just too focused on work and yeah. a lot of people come to me and i can tell like okay what is it that makes you happy yeah oh well work makes me happy no what yeah. is it that really makes yeah. you happy oh you know more money makes me happy. But yeah. what is it that you want to do? And a lot of people just don't know. So I, yeah. sometimes I ask. Do you know what, when I hear you say that, because I actually know that that's, that, that's the, that that's the way it is, that it doesn't you know, solve all the problems that 
you know, work or money or anything like that. Cause I sort of tried that in my early twenties. What I came to find out is that that type of lifestyle, because, you know, if you have a good heart and you want to help people, but you, you know, you want to be driven occupationally or, or entrepreneurial or however you want to do it to, to grow and develop and build wealth. Right. Um, even if you come about it with integrity, it's not necessarily, well, at least it's been my experience, Jonathan, is it wasn't a sustainable model. It was something where you would just obsess. I would obsess over something and I would want to do it so badly and become, I, I was so desired to uh, want to improve and improve and be better and be, it's just, I have a very competitive uh, nature is it's just, I, you end up, at least I ended up burning out if I didn't have balance, if I didn't have, um, yeah, the other areas that I've talked about, the sports and my family and I had a boxer that just passed, unfortunately, but he was 12 and we used to always go on long hikes and walks and stuff. And so I think, I think, um, yeah, I, I had learned that hopefully. That's good. Yeah. You said that to build wealth and to build this generational wealth that, you know, just focused on work and only focused on that singular activity is it you've found out for yourself. Most people will eventually find out for themselves if that's what they're doing is is not the right answer because there's so much more to life that is missing if you're only focused on worth so what would you say is a piece of advice that you would give to a listener as one way that they can start building out this long-term wealth for themselves and their families um i mean that's a very it's a very open-ended question um and we do a lot of open-ended yeah, questions here especially I, when the, we just for some reason hit the, the lights for and the some, camp. yeah oh. well absolutely <laughs> well for some reason the first thing that comes to mind is multifaceted have income coming from multiple angles that that's what i would say first um that's because you know in my opinion and and this is sort of i i think one of the major value adds with the media side and and kind of my passions in, in real estate, but here I am spending a good amount of time on the media side, not knowing a whole lot about it, but definitely seeing value in it is I just feel like, um, the people, so I used to do retirement planning. I mean, that was what I did. And I met a lot of clients traditionally, you know, 55 to 60 year old couples nearing retirement. Let's say that's my, was my uh, bread and butter client. Um, what I, what I came to find is there was two major contributing factors or sort of commonalities that a lot of them that had done well and had built sustainable wealth. Um, there's a couple of traits. The first one is they always had multiple income sources. So I think one of the things that I, I like most about real estate is that there's a lot of different ways in which you can be successful in real estate. You can be a real estate property owner and have rentals. You can have passive income from that. Short-term rentals, like we just alluded to with Big Bear Properties. Um, investors, you know, you could be a silent partner. You could come in on a deal with me and revere real estate and we could, you know, discuss what it would look like to, to earn more than a savings account or more often than not much more than the stock market. Um, you can also be a developer or a custom home builder. You could be a real estate broker. I mean, there's the, the list continues to go on in real estate, but, um, if you're doing that and, or, you know, because a lot of the people that I work with, they, especially my investors, obviously they have their own occupations, but then they're earning with me in real estate. So that's a way in which they have a nine to five and then they're also making real estate earnings. And then they also have a brokerage account and they're doing some day trading and they also have, you know, some sort of license thing that they get a royalty from or, you know, just, just, or they're an author, right? They're, you know, there's a, you know, they're a real estate broker and investor and author and a podcaster and a, you know, social media influencer and a public speaker. And just, that's what comes to mind to me. And then that second facet of the, the general commonality I saw with, with clients of mine that had developed and sustained wealth is living within or under your means. So that was always something that I've always admired with certain clients is I would walk up to a, I'd go up to a house and, and traditionally when I met with them, we'd sit at the dining room table and we'd discuss retirement planning from a goal and objective standpoint. And then we backed in to find the numbers and the math to, to try to accomplish and, and set out the, the strategies and the financial products to be able to put that into place. And now I'm finding myself doing that for clients in the real estate development space really is when I walked up to a house and I saw a lot of fancy stuff, I found that there was oftentimes a lot of debt. Mm. They were running on debt. 
They were, you know, taking a home equity line of credit out on their home. Um, and, and it's just, it, you could tell they were just very strapped, you know. And then I'd go, especially, we're in Huntington Beach here. You know, clients of mine that lived in Huntington Beach, you know, east side coast of Mesa, and they'd lived in their property for 40 years. They, they, they own their home outright. They have modest vehicles, you know, and, and they're the ones that like have the cash because <laughs> they didn't, they didn't buy stuff, you know, that, that, that wasn't important to them. And I found that over a long period of time, if you have multiple sources of income and especially if you live within your means, right, you don't grow too fast. As soon as you get the promotion, you go out and, and, and tack on more debt and buy a better vehicle or whatever the case may be. I mean, your your net is still the same. So why not take that promotion and then store it? So I, I got you long-winded with the open-ended question there. Yeah, you did. And it's, it's surprise, surprise, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> Friends of mine will and family will know I, I once I get going sometimes. Oh, that's, and I, I tell the people that all the time too. If you're passionate about something, you'll start lighting up like a Christmas tree and you can't get, the, can't get it to turn off. Is and that what you've been seeing? That's what, that's what happens to me. Uh, or I'll talk to people and they're not passionate about something or they're telling me that they're going to do something and I'll quickly turn to him right afterwards and say, that'll never happen for them. And he'll <laughs> say, why? And I said, because you can tell they don't believe in themselves. Yeah. And I, and I think that's important. So what are, the, what are some of the kind of core values or uh, things that you, know, you run your business by that you firmly believe in that other people, um, not necessarily they should run their business this exact, exact way, but you know, maybe they should think about these things that have either served you well or uh, not served you well. Well, the things that have served me well are commitment, dedication, uh, discipline, um, always, you know, setting out and, and doing what I say I'm going to do. If I'm going to say I'm going to do it, I'm either I'm going to either do it or I'm going to contact that individual and say, hey, listen, you know, how I said I was going to do this. I can't. Here's why I'll get to it next. Something like that. So that's always been very helpful. Obviously, a man of integrity, you know, instilling trust in, in people through your own actions, right? Not just what my intentions are, but my actions line up with what I'm saying. And then the things that I think don't serve me well is like I said, I had a past where I was so kind of obsessed with work that it's just not sustainable. It's not a way to live. It's not a way to build long-term um, sustainability. So I, I would absolutely say balance is key. And it's something I'm continuing to learn. I also have sort of a spiritual aspect to my life. So that's something that I, I definitely value. Um, so I would say those main areas. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, what would you say for the next one to five years? What are your goals as far as some of the things that you're looking forward to? This is like an interrogation. If you yeah. didn't know I was an interrogator yeah. in the army, yeah. so I know yeah. how to he keep, was, keep it going. He was. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thanks. Both of my parents were in the military. Appreciate it. Um, I'm a huge fan of the military. So um, let's, 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 let's fast track five years from now. What does it look like for Revere and the family of properties that you're, you're under, whether it be real estate development, media, what does that kind of look like for you? Um, 10 to 15 properties in a given year. Um, and you're smiling, but we hold people accountable on I, this show. So I, just so you know, there's absolutely. tons of people that come in here and they tell me they're going to do this yeah. in six months, six months. Yeah. We follow up with them and like, dude, yeah. did you do this? So like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, come on. What, are, what do we win if we surpass what I just said? What I said? You're going you're gonna to win generational wealth because you're going to have <laughs> multiple streams of income coming in because you actually did it. And maybe you'll be an active participant in, in uh, there you the success, go. success of that. Um, Cha-ching. <laughs> I kind of, I like that. It's like a little like soundboard. soundboard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a synthesizer or something that the, the musicians play with. Um, <laughs> tough, tough, tough crowd. Um, no, we can get them. All. <laughs> oh, there we go. That was, that's a, like a friends episode. Did you know, by the way, just a little aside, so my fiance is obsessed with friends. Did you know? My wife has a friends t-shirt on as we speak. Okay. Did you know that there was, there's <laughs> no audience in any of the friends episodes, but if you listen, they have, they have a, like a soundboard that plays the, the people clapping. Yeah. There's no, it, I, I, it's the minute I learned that I lost just a little bit of respect for that show. Cause then there's all this like laughing and clapping and it's all computer animated. It's, there was actually no audience ever on that show. Anyways, um, the question that you had asked me, John, five years, five years, don't avoid it. Five years deflection. Um, 
I would say, I would say, yeah, 10 to 15 properties on an annual basis, some of which are in the for sale space, coastal Orange County, coastal Los Angeles. For sale space being, you know, develop a property for the purpose of spec development where we sell it off and hope to earn a spread and then continue to move forward. Having a couple of multifamily, you know, hopefully in opportunity zones, multifamily development where it's a buy and hold strategy where we season the rents, get it up to market, kind of reappraise it draw some of the equity back out of it to deploy in other deals, but then keep the property, keep it cash flowing, you know, good cap rate, uh, properties like that, that sort of model that. And then, you know, hopefully uh, be in a position where, you know, I love, I was saying, we were chatting a little bit beforehand, Jonathan, I absolutely love your office. Uh, I think it's very tasteful and I think it's very conducive for a lot of constructive and productive activity. So I think having my own space, you know, having Revere Real Estate with the little, you know, kind of brick and mortar shop, I think would be cool, similar to this, where, you know, we have some space and some employees and, um, you know, maybe somebody that's that's at the front, you know, re, you know, answering the phones and, you know, kind of being the face and, you know, so, because that's the environment. Some, some people have this desire to just always be behind the scenes and just do tons of deals. Uh, one of my partners is that way and he's extremely successful. Shout out to Grant Keen, WJK Development. But he... He, he doesn't, I don't think he really cares. He just wants to, to, to build for his family. I, I want to create, so to your question on the five years, I want to create an actual company, you know, like, a, you know, where it's, a, I can't think of like a small developer that has like a brick and mortar space that, that I'm wanting to replicate, but something where there's, there's um, you know, clients can come into the office and there's a boardroom and some of the investors come on a quarterly basis and we give presentations or, you know, realtors can pop in and out whenever they want. And, um, so that's kind of an environment. So, you know, doing deals, um, maybe wholesaling some larger stuff, you know, maybe some things that are um, maybe, you know, 45 to, to 75 unit apartment complex where, you know, I'm getting them ready and entitled and then, um, you know, sell it off to a, a large scale developer. Um, children, put that at the very front. Children, family, all that stuff. Do you yeah. have kids? I don't. Do you, when are we having the first one? We're going to uh, hold you accountable yeah, to that. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're currently not having children, just, just uh, practicing at the moment. But I think, um, I, I think, I think, I think probably in the next year or so. Um, Emma, They're the best. Yeah. I have a three-year-old. Yeah, I, I know. I get to see. He had some cookies today, I saw. Oh, I didn't see that. That was yesterday. Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah, Sometime. he came to visit. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I suppose stories yeah, you last see, that's another. Hours. You see his little table and his little station. He wanted a station, so we had to give yeah. him one. Well, how are his grades? He's not in school. He's well, a three-year-old. You three don't have him in school? He's in well, summer break. Get him. Oh, summer break. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um... One of the questions that we like to ask randomly to yeah. people are if you can meet three people dead or alive and have lunch with them today, legends, yeah. past presidents, current family member, it doesn't matter who it is, who would those three people be and why? The first person would be my grandfather on my dad's side. So my grandfather was killed in World War II. Um, so I would love to meet him. And for obvious reasons, he was, uh, he was killed before, way before I was born. So that would be really cool. And, um, you know, without getting too like emotional, I would love to see my brother again. So I'm a twin. I was born a twin and my brother passed when we were teenagers. So I would love to be able to spend more time with him. And so I would, uh, sit down and, and, and get a chance to, to, um, to spend time with him again. And then I would say third and finally, let's say, let's change it up. Maybe somebody um, kind of political or I would probably say, I don't know, somebody political. I, I would probably say like one of the earlier presidents, you know, like maybe Taft or, you know, you know, Lincoln or Jefferson or somebody. why? I would say pro probably because I'm kind of interested in the, the history of it all, like the founding fathers, the, you know, how this country came about. You so know, you'd, you'd want to be sitting like... I'd want to be sitting where like bed. somebody has like an ink pen, you know, with a feather <laughs> on it. And they're, you know, they're wearing the, the you know, the, 
headpiece. Head piece. <laughs> I, I was trying to think what of what it's called. Yeah, it's like made out of wool or something. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, I, I would probably say you know some of the one of the founding fathers. I was going to say George Washington. It sounds kind of cliche, but uh, somebody who was like one of our first presidents. I I admire people who are politically powerful. So I think the what it takes to get to that position, I respect immensely. Um, cause there's a lot of competition in, in politics. And so somebody that was like one of our founding forefathers and, and, you know, kind of, or somebody that created the constitution or, you know, Benjamin Franklin who decided not to sign, you know, just like, hearing their stories, Thomas Jefferson and his, you know, his ranch life. And I've always been kind of fascinated by that. My, my father was a history major in, a, in his undergrad. And so I kind of was raised with that whole, um, we as a family, like learn a lot about history. So that, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't think I was able to define it well enough, but that's why I kept kind of trying to yeah. verbally process. It's a, it's a hard question, especially when yeah. it's right on well, the spot. Well, let me ask you this. What, I mean, in, in if, without repeating any previous answers, what would be the three that you would? Yeah. The three that I gave to somebody who interviewed me about three weeks ago were Elon Musk, Richard oh. Branson, and President Trump. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm a huge, I'm a huge Branson fan. Hit you didn't all, name him. Yeah. No, the, yeah. <laughs> you I, named yeah. one of the founding fathers. I love, uh, <laughs> I love Necker. The, my time at Necker Island was just phenomenal. One thing that I'm passionate about is about helping people and connecting yes. people and growing their networks, growing their brands, growing their businesses. And I think that for me, I've learned that a lot of people that have come onto my podcast, they've wanted to say something that could help them, but they didn't say it. And maybe there was somebody listening that may, maybe could have connected or grown or done something. Is let's let's say that you have something on the, the top of your mind that I can help you with. Uh, imagine that you're just talking to me, even though we know that you're on a podcast and more people are listening. What's one thing that I I can do to to help you out? Whether it be you know help help me find this type of connection, help, you know introduce me to this person that maybe you've seen me with. I'm I'm always about just helping people. Yeah. Is there anything that I could do to, to help you or help grow your brand or help connect you with anybody or just maybe give you a back massage? I don't know. You're looking at me like, <laughs> no, I'm just, like, well, I'm just actually, waiting. No, I'm yeah. just waiting for, uh, uh, for, you can give me the hand at any time. Yeah. Tell oh, me to shut up. Okay. Um, yeah, here, I'll just go. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time anybody has ever touched the soundboard. You're welcome. And we said, whenever <laughs> the first person does it, they don't walk out. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would say um, I would say the best way, and I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that greatly for you to come up with a thought like that, and and um, you know, give me the floor. I would say the best way to facilitate, you know, help and revere is, you know, connecting me with people who want to participate in real estate development, who want to be either an active member, who have a passion or a desire or entrepreneurial spirited and want to get into development themselves and partner with me um, or somebody who wants to have a little bit of a passive approach and likes the question answered earlier where it's how do you build sustainable wealth? Well, multiple sources of income, especially if you have opportunities to create passive income or, you know, have your money grow with a, with a solid internal rate of return that development can offer. Um, I would say those areas, people that just want to be participating in real estate. That's why I like connecting with brokers. Sometimes I'm not exactly sure why I'm, why I'm connecting with so many brokers, but all they do is talk real estate all day. You know, one of the brokers that I met actually, and I gave a presentation to, to um, I'll be general so it doesn't get too specific, but his or her office um, I gave a little pre presentation and he or she is now going to be actually an investor in the Santa Monica deal, you know, personally. And, um, you know, they just, they source deals and basically just anybody, if you were finding a way to, to contribute to Revere's growth, anybody who wants to participate in real estate. And would that be here in Southern California, any specific region, states? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can I can absolutely see eventually growing out of state. I know Boise, Idaho is crushing it right now. Um, there's Shout out Doug Johnson, Joan Johnson, yeah. number one brokers in Boise, Idaho that Bo I know. Boise is doing so well. Those are I've, my peeps. I've been keeping my eye on Boise because I think there's a conduit between Southern California, 
people not affording it, you know, that middle class that just moves out of state, they used to go to Denver. And then I think there's a large amount of people going to Idaho now. There is. I would love to. I was on a call with them two weeks ago. They said the number one amount of people are coming from Southern California to Boise. So we're reading the same stuff. No, I'm talking directly to the broker. Yeah. I know exactly. Well, yeah. then, they will. okay. So there you go. There's yeah. a connection. Well, I'm reading. You're, you're there you it. go. Um, but yeah, so, so out of state eventually, but I, I think there's just a lot less control unless I'm flying up there on a regular basis. There's a lot less control. So I'd like to master. Well, that's my, why you have Doug and Joan. I like to master my zip code first and, you know, just run out of space before I start looking elsewhere. So where can people contact you? Where can they message you if they have questions, if they want to help, if they want to contribute, if they want to connect with you directly, where would that be? Well, they can find me on, you can go to my website, www.revere.realestateco.com. Um, I can be found on LinkedIn, Nick Lind, last name L-I-N-D. You can find me on Instagram at Revere Real Estate. Uh, or Revere Media Group. We just started a page for that. Um, or you can call me, 949-735-8431. Oh, that's typing. There you go. Wait. You can text me. You can do it. There it is. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, but no, the reason why I give that out. Nobody has given their phone number out on this yeah. podcast. Well, the, the reason why I give can it out is. Can you repeat it? Yeah, 949 Area code 949, used to be 714. I was born and raised here. Um, 949-735-8431. Call me, text me, email me, nick.lind, L-I-N-D, at reverereestateco.com. Contact me any way you know fit. And if you and the reason I would encourage you to do so is if you answer yes to the following question, I would like to participate in real estate. That was like a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like dropping I, bombs. I, I see your, I see you your logos and, you know, dropping bombs. So, uh, but let's, let's wrap it up here. Sure. We talked about some sources of income as far as, you know, building sustainable wealth. We talked about, you know, that it's, that it's key to have a business in life that you love in order to sustain this, you know, business and in, or, in order to sustain these multiple sources of income. We talked about some ways that we can help you as when I say we, me and the people of this, this podcast, right. what would be something that's on the top of your mind that if, you know, it, I wish it did, but if it cost a million dollars an hour to sit with me and, and ask a question that I can help you with right now, what would it be? How do I create more leads of people who want to participate in real estate, i.e. what would it look like to create the proper digital funnel? Sweet. So I would, I would tell you that, and you're looking at the whiteboard project why. up there yeah. is you always have to start off with a, a lead magnet. A lead magnet is something that is going to uh, be a download. It's going to be a, a giveaway. It could be a coffee cup that I can give to you. It can be a guide on 10 steps to growing sustainable yeah. sources like of income, article. something. Yeah. Uh, the reason that you want to do that is because once somebody actually puts in information willingly, they're 10 times more likely to, to take the next step. Most people will sell something or do something like buy my product, invest with me, um, come to this event. Well, most people don't take that first step because their brain is actually wired to put their guard up. What if this doesn't work? What if you lose money? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? So when you lead with the, with the lead magnet, you then get them into that tripwire. And that tripwire is, it's not, you know, the come invest with me. It's not the come give me a deal. It's the actual, uh, something like a, a, what we call a splinter. It's a, a portion of the product. The example that I like to give. You like give them a taste of you don't you don't necessarily give them a taste you actually give them something at value okay let me let me give it to you this way Please. a dentist that wants somebody to become a dental client for their business because you get all these insurance claims and whatever throughout the year let's say that they're charging 50, uh, uh it, it costs them fifty dollars to do teeth whitening okay well rather than them going out and spending or marketing two hundred dollar teeth whitening where they make 150 dollars my recommendation would be to them charge fifty dollars for the teeth whitening well jonathan we're not going to make any money great but guess what you're going to have people sitting in your chair getting teeth whitening it's a much easier sell to get them as a long-term client here and also you can recommend the invisalign you can recommend the this the this right. the this the this the this you just now 
entered into what we would call our profit maximizer is you got them going through this funnel where they learned about Invisalign, they got teeth whitening, they sat in your chair, and now they're an Invisalign client. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, you just have to look at that, that portion. Now, not everybody will just go through the funnel instantly. So you have those two things. One is called the engagement series and one is called the ascension. The engagement is just that. If they don't take what I'm offering, how do I engage with them? We go through three phases, gain, logic, and fear. If you buy this, if you do this, this is what you could gain. You invest with me, you can make X amount of dollars per month. Logic is uh, essentially showing them something that's fact. This person did it and it worked. There's the proof. Fear is if you know about a deal and you don't tell me about it, you're losing out on money every single month. So why would you be losing out on money when you can just partner with me and you can make money? Oh, now that's the fear of missing out. Right. So you go through this series with somebody and eventually you will get them going into uh, one of the buckets and then it's cyclical, cyc cyclical? Yeah. cyclical, meaning once they've invested with you, once they've done something with you, you actually have to restart them in the very beginning. Most people never do that. Once they're a client, they just treat them as a client. Once they're an investor, they're an investor. Right. But you actually have to restart the cycle. Why? Because you have to keep keep their engagement up, keep their passion up, keep them involved in the things that they're doing. Or guess what? They get tired, they get bored, right. it doesn't work. Eh, bah, bah. And then you have to source new. Yeah. I'm so that makes know, a lot of sense. There you go. So that was a, that was three minutes. So I said it cost a million dollars per hour. So we'll take yeah. the three minutes, million yeah. divide and <laughs> <Yeah>. pro rate. <laughs> In, uh, I think I'm in on it for about, you know, 60,000, something like that. Can you repeat where can people connect with you and any last piece of advice that you yeah. would give to somebody that is in the trenches that cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel? Maybe it's something that you've personally gone through that, yeah. hey, just try doing this or this is what I've done that's worked for me. Maybe this can help you as well. Absolutely. And, and again, thank you very much for having me. It's been an honor and a humbling experience to be able to sit with you and chat. Um, you can find me at www.reverrealestateco.com or you can find us on Instagram, Revere Real Estate. Been building that page out. Um, great content on our development projects to follow. I would say, I would say the thing that's been so I knew for the longest time, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll keep this as concise as possible, but I knew for the longest time that I was going to be in real estate. I didn't know what it looked like. I always was under the impression that it was such a challenging and difficult barrier to, that it was such a large barrier to entry to get into real estate. I had bought my own home and I did sort of like a fix and flip over a few years as like an owner occupant. And that was my first taste of it. But I knew that that wasn't it. I knew that it was like a lot more than that, whether it was like a side gig or whether it was something I wanted to do full time, which I eventually did. Um, but for anybody that's kind of going through the trenches, I would say um, my number one piece of advice or what I would leave somebody with, and, and that's why I said, you know, if you want to, and I left it open on purpose. If you want to participate in real estate, give me a ring, find me, reach us. Um, is because what I'm about to say is I think was the, the, the major pivotal change that I had in my life from an occupational standpoint in real estate. And that was link up with people that you respect and admire that are doing what you would like to be doing. So if you're currently doing something that you don't like, I'm, I'm speaking mainly to the real estate crowd. If you're in your space and you're not fulfilling your your passions or you're not feeling like you're able to maximize where your potential could be find people that are doing what you want to be doing and link up with them find people and say i'll do the work and i'll split it with you that's what i've been doing i'll do the i'll do all of the stuff that you used to do and that you don't do anymore now because you're at such and such level be of value to, to, to that individual or that company or those groups of people and just be the, the workhorse, work your face off and help people that are doing what you want to be doing. And if you find the right people and they have a big heart, they want you to succeed. You know, the people that I link up with, they want me to succeed. 
you know, and it's at no cost to anybody else. It's we all get to grow. We all get to build together. And I think that if I could leave you with something, find people that are doing what you want to do and find a way to bring them value. And if you bring them value, they will bring you along for the ride and climb your way up to the top with them. That's what I would say. You hear, you heard it here first, man. I don't know why I'm, this is a, a lot of talking for Did me. That in make one a day. lot of sense. It definitely made a lot of sense. And we'll make sure we edit that last portion out. Make no sure problem. that you follow Nick at Revere Real Estate. Yes. At Instagram. Revere Media Group on yes. Insta. You can follow him, Nick Lind, on LinkedIn. You can go to www. Nobody's ever said that either. They always just say their their website. Oh, but really? www.revierrealestateco.com. Yeah. See, now you know he's listening. There I we like go. It. I like it. Hey, thank you so much, John. And then, honestly, I got, I got to say again, just for a third time, it's so awesome to spend time doing things like this. And I respect you for the platforms that you've created. You're a, you're a role model and you're an inspiration to people like myself who are kind of continuing to to notice that you're paving the way for people like us. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Sweet. Cool. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.